Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Tom, Seth, and Jeff here with you with the JFree906 podcast. And how are you guys doing tonight? Great. I even remember to unmute my mic. First time ever. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, I'm yes, doing awesome. Yeah. How's it? What's, uh, you know, uh, weather wise, you guys hanging in there? You got the big storm yet up there, Tom? Yeah, we got, uh, we got hammered a little bit today. We did pretty well here in southern New Brunswick, but some other areas uh, along the coast got hammered pretty good. Yeah. The bridge to oh, PEI but... was closed today. The ferries weren't running. Oh, wow. Not as many hmm. power outages in, as previous storms, but I don't think there's any trees left to knock down. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know those guys. Wow. Uh, Seth, how about you? Everything good down there? Uh, Doing good. It's yeah. going to get cold, but you know, uh, oh, Texas is it's relative. I can't complain. So whether <laughs> it was, the sun was out today. Oh, wow. So I yeah. tried to fly I mean, my uh, seven here tomorrow. So. Ooh, wow. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, thank you guys for joining me here tonight. We have a very special night. We are going to be talking about uh, season 11, episode number nine, filling cavities. But we have a special guest that will be joining us here in just a little bit. Mr. Scott Clark, author of this book right here, The Oak Island Odyssey, a Masonic Quest. And he was featured last night on the uh, Curse of Oak Island show again. Uh, talking about a little bit more about his book and his theory about what's going on with Oak Island and all the connections and everything. Fantastic book. So we'll have him on here in just a little bit uh, so we can talk with him. And we'll just have him come on and we'll just we'll kind of cover the rest of the show. We're going to kind of go through everything else first. Uh, but thank you all for coming tonight. Appreciate it very much. Uh, just a little bit of housekeeping. If you'd like to help support the show, you may do so in many different ways. Have a, a PayPal account. Um, also have, you can do a super chat. Uh, if you want to get your uh, message brought right to the head of the line, you can do a super chat or something like that. Um, that's always good. You can also get a, one of the tumblers that I don't happen. I did not grab my tumbler, so I don't have a tumbler here in front of me. Uh, to you can get that from uh, blue6laser.com. All the stuff is linked down below in the description of the show uh, for tonight. So, uh, in, and you can also buy some of the merch at jfree906.com. We have hats and t shirts, stuff like that. Anyway, that just helps to keep this thing going. It does unfortunately have a cost to it. So, uh, and if you like the content of our show tonight, give us a thumbs up. Uh, we appreciate that very much. But I uh, really appreciate everyone coming. And, um, you know, it's one of those things I, I did a little, uh, uh, for those people that might be joining because they saw the thumbnail, we will get to that. I promise we will get to that uh, very, very soon. Uh, just going to cover a few other things first. <laughs> Tom and Seth are both going, what is he talking about? I have no idea what he's talking about. I know about. what he's talking about. I haven't seen the thumbnail for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we'll get there. Ron, thank you, Ron. Oh my gosh, Mr. Ron. Hey, Ron. Appreciate you, Mr. Mm. Mr. We, Ron from we down. Chart a, chart yeah. a course to Oak Island. Nicaragua. Yeah, I mean, we get, you know, please let us know where you're from too. That's something that Colin Jameson always says, let us know where you're from because it's really cool to look at the the area, you know, the places that, you know, people come to this podcast mm -hmm. or people who love Oak Island, the curse of Oak Island. It's fun to see where you're all from. So put your if you don't mind, just uh, say hi and put up where you're from. We really appreciate that a lot. All yeah, right. I always I always enjoy seeing Texas well represented in the chat. <laughs> yeah, you've got a few. You've got a mm -hmm. few. Orchards, uh, Texas Farm, all those guys. Yeah, there's a few of them in there. Um, Arkansas, there we go. Arkansas, now it's north of Boston. Now it's getting started. All right, there we go. Arizona, all right. Okay, season 11, episode number nine, Filling Cavities. Uh, and we do have a giveaway tonight. It is actually uh, the, our special guest, uh, Scott Clark, has one of his books. And he's going to sign it and personalize it for whoever is the lucky winner of that book. So we'll have that coming up in just a little bit as well. All right. So let's, uh, let's get going with uh, my, my many pictures. Pennsylvania. Oh, all right. Uh, yeah, I'm over on the uh, west side of Pennsylvania. That's where I'm at right now. Greetings from South Africa. Cool. Oh, howdy. Wow. I think that's the furthest away. So, <laughs> wow. Welcome. Thank you for coming. I appreciate that. Wow. UK. All right. All right. Let me get this shared here so we can get rolling. We got to, I, I don't want to make my guest wait too long here. So we'll get, uh, get rolling with some stuff. 
Uh, let's see. Let's go with that right there. Okay, starting off, of course, the Curse of Oak Island. We love that, uh, that logo there. Let me get this off the screen. There we go. All right, nice little shot, aerial shot of the money pit. And that's where we're kind of starting tonight. Um, you know, now that the guys of uh, Rick and Marty have been down inside the garden shaft a few times, it's becoming a regular thing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for them to be able to go down there and they and they get to look at what's happening um, down there, you know, with all the flooding. And one thing that, you know, we, you, we know that there was a lot of rain. I know that last summer, you guys up there, Tom. <coughs> you know, yeah, uh, record rainfall, yeah record rainfall and as they were going along i love this sign right here men working below i had to get a picture of it because i just love that i think that's really cool uh but you know the rainfall and it's still pouring into the garden shaft it i mean it's still coming in at a pretty good rate i think they actually said 250 gallons a minute but we thought about that and i thought yeah. man that's almost impossible that's fifteen thousand gallons an hour <clears throat> <laughs> yeah no, I mean you figure if you figure that your average you see a truck going tractor trailer going down the road with a big tanker behind it pulling gasoline, huh? that's ten thousand gallons. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you're not dumping one of those in there every hour. No. You you, you just couldn't keep right. it dry. And yeah. not only well, could he, you not keep it dry, where would you pump it to? Yeah, exactly. Wow. But then I'm later glad you the guys show, do that math. Yeah, <laughs> late, later later in the show, the other gentleman they were talking to down there says when they leave at night and they come back in the morning to turn the mm -hmm. pump on, there's 15 to 20 feet of water. Yeah, exactly. That that makes more sense. I think he meant an hour, 250 gallons an hour. I guess a minute. Is, yeah, he said a minute, and I'm thinking, wow, that's. I don't think anybody would be able to be down there with that. Yeah, well, I was going to ask could they even no. stand in that. <laughs> no. no. Okay. Couldn't no. pump it fast enough. Yeah, I saved this picture right here because of the camera. If you see that camera right here next to the ladder. That's the camera that they put down in the borehole sometimes. And I think mm -hmm. they put it down there because they want to be able to watch what's happening. Um, when mm -hmm. they're putting this. Uh, yeah, they do. Multi. What did they call it again? Multi. Multi urethane sealant that they're mm -hmm. putting in there. Um, that's going to go in and seal up on the backside of the or I guess in between the original workings of the garden shaft and the. Um, the new, you know, the refurb section, which you can yeah. kind of see in this picture here, um, you know, as Rick is reaching into that hole, this is that hole that they looked in last week. And we saw that cavity inside there. Mm -hmm. uh, Rick reached in and pulled out a piece of wood. Um, and I wanted to mention too, that there was a guy that uh, made a comment. Actually, there was two people. I only could find one of them again, but I was uh, reaching out to him uh, that made some comments about the, um, uh, about that void area that they looked at last week. And one of them said, you know, I think maybe that void is simply was put there by the people who originally dug and created the garden shaft as a little void area, a place to put tools for overnight, whatever. Yeah. And that's not, <clears throat> that's not surprising because anytime we see those other caves or tunnels and they go look in Italy, there's all these those little, side chambers whatever you want to call them that they put lamps in or whatever yep. but yep. storage places so yeah yep. totally possible yeah mark uh the one guy that i was that made the comment and he's the one that man and i did want to give him credit for that because i said you know that's probably what it really is and then we heard him actually mention that last night uh mark mark m-a-r-k-l-e-y-s-h-o-n mark markley son anyway Thank you for that, because I think you were right spot on with that. I think that's exactly what it was, uh, that void. It was still interesting. And the wood, as you see, uh, Rick is pulling out a piece there. And then that's there's Marty checking it out. And then, of course, they got one of those wedges uh, that we saw in that picture, too. And, of course, they'll get these uh, they get mm -hmm. these carbonated. So um, does, any, does any of that stuff look like clay to you guys? Well, I was going to ask that because somebody in the chat asked, you know, how come the alcove isn't full of water? And I was wondering that too. And I was going to ask, do y'all think it had to do with all the clay? Like, did they well, seal did it? Did you see or Rick just... reach in? I think it was Rick last night reached in and, and took a piece out and put it on his fingers and looked at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I so did notice you... that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there is a lot of clay. And, and, and you know, is that, it's not blue clay. Now, they haven't made any comment about that. True Seeker, thank you so much. Thanks for all the work you do to put the, uh, put in to provide this and the skinwalker ranch platforms 
and now the Discord. You're welcome. I appreciate you guys coming by and hanging out with us in Discord. Yeah, we have a Discord channel. Uh, there's a link for it down below. We hang out in there on Tuesday nights and watch the show. Actually, there's people that go in there. You can use it anytime. It's up 24-7. There's a voice chat in there. We do a little watch party on Tuesday nights, um, the Curse of Oak Island and, and all of that. So appreciate all of you guys who come by and join us for that. Uh, but thank you, Truth Seeker. I appreciate it very much. Um, uh, you know, what? one thing, too, I, I know I thought about with this is they had mentioned the water, you know, the rain. One thing they said last night was two weeks that they've been, it sounds like they've been delayed two weeks because of all this water mm -hmm. and continuing to dig uh, deeper into the garden shaft because they want to get down to what, 100 and what was it? 100 and some feet, 105? Yeah, 100. they want to get down. Yeah, they're only at what they say last night, 87 feet or something like that. Yeah, which is just only well, about got another, feet. they got another 20 feet to go or 15 feet or whatever to go. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's only another five feet or so. Uh, below uh, where they were to begin with so mm. uh, 82 at the a, end of last week. I, I feel like these struggles are such a testament to all the searchers that went before these guys because i mean mm. the struggles we're facing today with modern equipment and you know technology and i'm reading in scott's book you know and, and anytime you do research on oak island and they're going down to 100 feet in the 1700s and 1800s you, think, you know it's easy to gloss over those numbers and not really think about just how yep. hard the act of digging in the ground is without modern yep. tools. And they go down that far, they hit water, and then what do they do? They move over 10 feet and dig another shaft. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, and that's – that's. Uh, <clears throat> and somebody mentioned that in the comments too to the to the podcast after after the fact on, on YouTube and, you know, said something about all the modern machinery that they have today. Do you really think that somebody would have gone to all this trouble back then? Well, yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, manpower, now we got machinery and you don't need as much manpower back then. They had a lot of manpower going in there and digging yeah. and digging and digging. So, well, yeah. Dombey yeah. had 200 men assigned to that task, right? Whoa. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you had to provide ventilation and everything. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, and, and, but I, last week they made that comment about the water and it's like, you know, over the years, the water has always stopped them. They do a dig, you know, and they get down there, they run into water. And then they have to do something else. Well, now these guys are running into water, but Rick said that's not going to stop them. Mm. They're going to keep going. They're going to figure it out. So, yeah. So, yeah. So in the next picture I have, uh, continuing with the uh, with the garden shaft, uh, did you see Paul and Scott were down there? And, and again, they were talking about the water issue and they were continuing on with that. Um, but one of the things that I, I noticed when I looked at this picture right here, there's the pump down there. But you see where they're standing? They're standing <laughs> on a two by eight <laughs> or a beam, mm -hmm. a small beam. It's mm -hmm. like, <laughs> you know, I mean, they're okay. Obviously, everything's fine. But they're, yeah, there they are standing on it. I saw that in the picture. Mm -hmm. Oh, great channel. Thank you, John. Appreciate that very much. That's really cool. Right, thank you. Um, yeah, thank you. So, but I just thought that was really cool that the guys mm. are standing, and that's a pretty good sized pump that they got. I hadn't so. noticed that watching the show. <laughs> yeah, well, it's probably a three by. I mean, we're calling it. I'm calling it a two by eight. It's probably a three by eight. Those things are pretty thick. A rough cut two by eight, maybe. But mm -hmm. yeah, so I just thought that was kind of interesting. There they are, just standing on that thing. Another thing I wanted to point out was this. Remember how they kept they, when they took that piece of wood out of the side. Uh, of the, they had actually actually had cut both sides, and their water was pouring in through that hole. And then they bolted this plate with a pipe on it. You see that right there in there, in that picture right mm -hmm. here. Yeah, they bolted a plate on there that's got a piece of pipe sticking out of it. And then later on, you see this guy right here. If you can see that, I know it's hard to see. Um, it's so small, but he's actually got it. Uh, something hooked up. Up. He's hooking up a a pipe to that little piece yeah. of pipe sticking out. I think that's the urethane, isn't it? No, I, I think this is, I think this is the drain. Cause if you remember later uh, in the show, oh, we saw right. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. So, and yeah. one of the things that they talked oh. about was controlling the water flow because they, they, they can't, well, they're going to try to put the urethane in there and plug things up so it'll stop getting into there. But if they can control it, that'll help too. And I think this was, uh, part hmm. of the process of controlling it, pumping it. So it's not running all the oh. way down that extra from 65 feet to 85 feet. 
when I just know. looked at that picture, <clears throat> remember the metal, what they call them, shoe they were building on the surface to use underground? Yep. That, that goes around. That's the metal shoe behind it, isn't there it? There it is, right there. Yep. Mm. Yep. Yeah, that's the metal. That's one of the sections of the metal shoe. I think they yeah. were all like uh, two feet apart or two feet tall yeah. each section or something like that. Yep. So anyway, so things are continuing. Unfortunately, we've had this, you know, two week delay what's going on. And I, and I know that they, you know, we saw that picture that they shared with this, this one of the promos that they use for the show. Uh, and you see Rick down there on his hands and knees looking down and then this mud hole, this hole down at the bottom, that something that looks like a piece of wood. There's been a lot of people talking about what that may be. Um, 140 different comments on that particular video, but you know, we, we got to get to that point and hopefully we get there pretty quick, but you know, these delays, I mean, it, it's frustrating for us or for me anyway, you can imagine how frustrating it is for them. You know, they have to keep waiting. Yeah. I, th <clears throat> I think last thing was kind of like a, a lead into episode two, because they had some things that were kind of falling behind. So we didn't get a whole bunch of new stuff, mm -hmm. the exception of what Scott Clark did, but we didn't get a whole bunch of new stuff, but all stuff that all going to lead into the next two weeks. So, Mm -hmm. yeah i think you're exactly right and this is one of those things that they're leading into with the draining of the swamp um so they got everything rigged up out there at the swamp and finally going to get going with that there's that float that uh that they put out the end of it on that little float thing out there just so it's not sitting in the mud at the bottom um yeah they got going and they were talking about this there you know and again We've mentioned this many times where they talk about the age or the, the different things that they found in the swamp, which, you know, people are saying that, oh, you know, you mentioned this earlier, Seth. People are commenting to you, oh, they never find anything on that show. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you don't watch the show because they find stuff all. They haven't found the treasure yet. Right. But they're finding stuff all the time. And they're mm -hmm. finding a road in the southeast corner of the swamp that's highlighted in red right there. And that platform. And those have been dated around 1200 AD. Hmm. How can you say they haven't found anything when they're finding stuff that predates everything on the island? We the Mi'kmaq did not build that. No. You know, they so have no reason to. they have no reason to. Exactly. So who in the heck was mm -hmm. there 12 in 1200 AD building? This big stone road, it was another massive undertaking that would have been right. And then they came back centuries later and added on to it. Right. Yeah. I mean, so you you use a road for what? I mean, just transporting just some some beach, you know, <laughs> furniture yeah. for vacation out on your yeah. island. No, they were vacation doing heavy, island. heavy work. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and and baby, that's what I said. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm there. I. You wouldn't have found me there a couple of years ago, but I'm. 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 The, if, and if it wasn't intended place. for repeated use, if you were just there for a few days, you wouldn't build something that big. No, it's. I, I mean, I talk about this a lot with uh, with my kids. I'm like, you think stuff we build today is going to be there for generations, hundreds of years from now to find? Not much of it this is heavy duty and yeah, uh i loved i loved billy's excitement for finally getting back into the swamp i shared it this this was a, an exciting moment for me to get get finally like yes we're back in the swamp yep yeah where they're digging right there mm -hmm. uh, is going to reveal some very interesting things we've seen that in one of those little previews one of the little promos where they found some wood beams down there so we're going to see that pretty soon but also what Zane had just said, I saw it go by, Zane. I caught that real quick. I, the, the, the comments are going by pretty quick, but I did see that that, that stone that's out there when uh, uh, Matty Blake was standing there talking to him on that one drilling down, and we seen that stone that was over his shoulder that I think is one of the anchors. I think that's the mm. southern anchor. We'll find out. Well, you know, it's not uncovered yet. You don't see it in this picture. Well, that's not a – I don't – yeah, that is a true picture, I think, or maybe. No, I don't think so. I think mm, that's one of the. Hard to say. Yeah, that's one of the made-up pictures. But that stone was sitting right about in here. But we'll yeah, see. Yeah, the pump's place. not there. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So Did you see, but, you uh, see that big yellow pump. It would stick out like a sore thumb. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you know, they're they're here. They are. They're set up now. And and the miracle, the miracle of television, you know, the the it's already drained. 
You know, the, <laughs> I mean, the swamp is already drained. They got it done. Uh, let me get back to my pictures here because I just flipped fast too quickly. Um, but yeah, so they got the uh, they got the thing all drained out. And uh, whoops, there we go. So, and I was happy. I thought, oh man, are we going to have to wait for two weeks for them to get this thing, you know, drained? And you know, but the the uh, the magic of TV. Uh, there it is. It's getting drained already. Let's jump over there. There we go. Right there. Look at that. So there you go. It's already drained. But now they're going to, you know, they got to get the rest of this water that's down in here out of there. And then, of course, they'll continue to dig. Where, where, how are they getting around to the, to the money pit now with, with this road? I mean, you've seen, you know, there's a picture of, uh, of um, Billy digging right in this, right in the road. Yeah. I mean, they got it. They have to have a different route. There's only two ways around. Yeah, I don't know if they can still use. There used to be a road right down the center of the island at one time. But whether they use that or not, I don't know. The hmm. the one that goes through the middle of the lots, mm -hmm. like lots one and lot, you know, hmm. twenty six or twenty four, twenty three. Yeah, that road is still there. Hmm. And then hmm. it turns and goes down and around the bottom of the swamp. But then oh, okay. there's also the road that goes across and goes into across Nolan's property. Um, so I don't know. You know what? And obviously they they've got he's part of the team. He's part of the mm -hmm. fellowship. So um, Billy's digging up the road, bringing lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody yeah. leaving. Yeah. And here's the uh, here's the picture I have of that right here. So there he is. He's already begun. He's starting to dig up the road right there um, as they're going, as they're working. Uh, when we were there in September, they were piles of huge. Huge piles of dirt. Uh, looked like the road was impassable, yet they puttered in the side by side. Oh, okay. So yeah. the side by sides probably still get through there. Yeah, that's interesting. They found this, uh, what looked like a peg, a large peg. I was, when I first saw this thing, I was thinking maybe it was one of those. Uh, remember, they had those wooden um, markers? Uh, uh, survey stakes? Survey stakes. Thank you. Yes. I thought it was one of those at first, but then Rick was saying it looked like one of those uh, wooden pegs that they used to put together the uh, that he found when they did the U-shaped structure down in the yeah. swamp. I mean, the down wooden, in the uh, wooden those. dowels, yeah. Exactly, pinning two pieces of wood together with these wooden pegs. But they will get it dated. You can rest assured on that, and we'll get to find out more about it. Then, of course, Gary was down there doing some metal detecting, and then he found this piece of chain. Um, some people were saying it looked like it was relatively new chain, but I don't think so. I think this is pretty old. Yeah. Once they did the close up, you could see what Gary was talking about it being hand wrought. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think links, links don't look that uniform. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could be just the way they're corroding too, but they don't, you know, there's thin parts, point. parts. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think so. Then of course the hook at the top or one of the hooks, um, and then, you know, he found this, he found another hook. I think that that has to be either that's a hook or that's a wad that's of chain. Hook. It's all, you know, no, rusted together. But that sure looks like a hook to me. And then there's another hook. Mm -hmm. and, you got a block and, tack in the, block and tackle in the middle. It'd be a hook on each end of it, right? And the yeah, chain exactly. Mm -hmm. Which is why I love this picture right here. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, and I, and I thought this picture was cool simply because of not only because of the chest on a cart or being lowered down onto the cart um you know with a chain that was very similar and this is what carmen says in the promo for next week's show he mm -hmm. mentioned that um but there they are and and that's mm -hmm. you know and he said you know well this thing is broken if we, if it's broken then maybe that chest fell and broke open. There might be some remnants of it on the ground somewhere. So mm. uh, I will win tonight. Craig says he's going to win tonight. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Craig. I appreciate that very much. Uh, hopefully you do. I hope it's you. I don't know. It's all in the luck of the draw, right? So, but I thought this was really cool because they incorporated in this little ar artist rendition of the Southeast corner of the swamp, the road and the unloading and everything. And again, it's the idea of what that road may have been for. Mm -hmm. And if it does extend, that's what they're looking for now. That's why they're doing the work right now, digging down there. They want to see, does it extend out into the ocean underneath the actual road that they built to get over to the money pit? 
Um, so. Yeah, in this picture, I, I felt like I didn't think about it when they first showed it, right? I'm seeing an, an oxen in a cart, but a little bit later when they get to the, the, the potential flare and they're talking about, oh, it could be a turnaround. I thought back to this go, oh, okay, right. Like the oxen would come down, they'd have a turnaround to be in this position to load up and go up our stone road. Yep. yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I got a, a little snapshot of that too, because I thought, oh, wait a minute. I don't remember seeing some little flare out on there. But then when you right. see the pictures, you'll, mm -hmm. you'll see exactly where it is. And of course, they bring in Steve. Uh, so Steve can get the actual elevation of the stone road that was there and this rocks that they're now hitting down there. He got the shovel out. Rick did, and he was doing some hand shoveling to get down to that. And um, so he had uh, Steve come over and do a uh, get an elevation on it. And he said it was, uh, what, 2%? Yeah, 2% slope. 2% slope, yeah. Mm -hmm. A 2% slope from the road. So, and that makes total sense, you know, sloping, you know, down into like a like a mm -hmm. boat ramp. Think yeah. about mm -hmm. it like a boat ramp that you would launch. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Robert. Yeah, 2% de uh, decline uh, going out into the ocean, which, like I said, makes total sense. And again, you look at that. Look at that stone road. And if that thing dates to the 1200s, who would do so? Who would build something like that, right? Mm. Um, the small hook is odd. It may be the type that hooks back onto yep. the chain. Loop back onto the chain. Yep. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You're exactly right. It could very well be the truth. Um, here's where you see that picture of that of that flare out that you were yeah. just talking about. Um, it's definitely flaring out right there. And that's For something sure. that I hadn't realized. And they, they highlighted it in uh, the next picture. They got a little a highlight of it. Let me get to that one real quick. Uh, pop over here to it. Sorry about all that. There it is there. So you can see how it flares out right here on this side, like a little turnaround or something. Mm -hmm. Makes perfect sense. You know, if you think about it, they bring an ox cart down there and they turn the ox cart around to then go the other direction. Mm -hmm to unload and and it, it kind of goes back to that whole thing what was this road used for was it really for unloading ships and, and it kind of leads to believe that it is or it was well do we know somebody was hauling something to and or from the water yeah the edge they had to be there's no other reason for the road to be there yeah exactly well people said oh it's a it's a place where they're you know <laughs> fixing ships i don't doubt that there was parts of the island that may have been used for ship repair mm -hmm or maybe the British or the French or whatever, going back and forth. Mm -hmm. But I don't think this road was part of that. And it's such a big road too, looking at it compared to the, like our modern road and our machinery right there. Like mm -hmm. it's impressive. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm, I'm a broken record on this, but oh, I've no, always, no, since they found the road, I've always really just been super enthusiastic about it yeah i know i'm trying to hurry along here because i want to get to scott and oh, uh, yes. scott might have some input on some of these things too so he, he may very well have some uh, comments to make about it um so the next portion of the show they jump over to lot five and again lot five is just blowing everybody away with the things that are being found there um as you see the archaeology team uh working there with um everybody going at it um and, and this thing here, I'm so glad that they did this. They marked it out. Because mm -hmm. you remember that gray looking when they did the magnetometer survey, they went around there and they looked at everything. And I couldn't look at that gray scale no. and see anything. <laughs> Neither could I. You're not no, alone. It look, looked like drywall. It was just a picture of drywall to me. And they picked a shape and said, this is what's there. And I said, oh, okay. And I think I expressed this last, last episode where I was like, I'm so lost on what the shape of this structure. So I think I cheered when they yeah. were looking at this. I was like, yes. And I finally now get what they're talking about, where they put collapsed the walls in, they pushed the walls in, then buried it. So I kept saying the walls collapsed. I was like, which way did they collapse? Where? Where's? Mm. So... Yeah, I'm so I'm grateful for this uh, for this pink outline. And that's a big yeah. structure. It's huge. It is, it is huge. What did what did uh, Jan say in her synopsis here? Thirty by forty five. Yep. Thirty by forty five feet. Mm -hmm. That's that is huge. Um, and again, it goes back to why it's not a house. You're not going to make a house 
prior to 17 or prior to 1762 when the island was divided up into lots you're not going to build a house that big there so why what would it be used yeah. for the only thing i can think think of is is for some kind of storage now i did see pictures of indigenous pit houses on the west mm -hmm. coast of canada mm -hmm. that are very large with multiple walls inside them but i mean that's that's huge there's nothing that big around here that anybody's ever discovered that i know of mm -hmm. right exactly yeah um, and like i mean like someone in the chat said they're not even to the bottom yet yeah that's what we got to get to we got to get to the bottom of it literally yeah exactly yeah <laughs> yeah she said it hadn't hit the base level yet no base uh, floor yet and borgers texas farm you're right yeah it, i think it is it's been rocks and it's a rock and timber structure yeah uh the timber all rotted away or moved away or burned or whatever they did mm -hmm. to it um but the rocks are all still there obviously and they covered it up it could be a storehouse a lot of people are weighing in warehouse storehouse um and i think um you know i saw on here too uh zane said the fact that they are digging in the area again oh talking about the swamp the fact that they're digging in the area again must mean that they got the permits taken care of when they found the mi'kmaq pottery and yes they oh, have good point out. yeah they have worked that out uh so they're allowed to dig in those areas once again so mm -hmm. um, yeah very happy about that i'd still like to see them yeah. dig on the other end uh of the mm -hmm. swamp up on the up on the north side yeah. when they were finding that dam what may be the dam underneath the uh the mm -hmm. dirt there yeah. i want to keep see in mind too that the permit they may have been waiting for may not have been anything to do with with artifacts right it could be environmental hmm. because they got the permit and now they can pump the swamp right because they have to have the permit to where they have to pump that water to right right military barracks yeah i still think yeah, it, yeah. that's kind of what i'm I, yeah i like that idea the most yeah. i think yeah, and you've heard uh, Jack mention, you know, it has to do, it has to tie in with the money pit, the, you know, a place for everybody to sleep and everything, all the workers to, you know, I don't know, maybe Viking Longhouse. Hey, there you go, Cat. Yeah, you know, Moya, she's taking over on some of the GP, uh, the GPS uh, work here with the stick and going around, and she helped mark it out because they had that on the survey, so she went around and got everything marked out the corners anyway, mm -hmm. and then they laid it out. And then they found this. And I talked about this a little bit at some sort of a ring. There's the best picture we've got of it. Um, we're hoping, like I mm -hmm. think you guys are, I want to see them get this over to the uh, interpretive center, over to the lab, not the interpretive center now, over to the lab and get a good look at this thing. It's so it uniform. Is. It almost looks manufactured. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I mean, good point. It, we don't have any idea. Is it a ring? Is it a piece of jewelry? We don't know. People, and I did that little video about it, is there, is there was there women that were with some of the men over here? That sometimes women did travel with them, but there were men that wore jewelry too, rings. I mean, still do. So it could have been a man's ring. It could have been a pirate's ring. We don't know what it was. Could be a napkin holder. <laughs> could be a napkin holder. Could be one of those little eyelets on a tarp, you know, the little eyelets yep. on the car. No, I'm just <laughs> mm -hmm. And they found this, you know, and again, we need Carmen leg to be carbon dating this thing mm -hmm. um yeah yeah and we may that's true linda we may never hear about that ring ever again it may never no. show up carmen may never look at it it may never be on the show ever again mm -hmm. that's very true um uh, interesting to see what this piece here was uh, again we don't uh, yeah. i don't know guesses <laughs> what, the, what you thought that might be i thought it was it might have been part of a handle but yeah well Got they were thinking maybe part of a uh a chest or something like mm -hmm. a part of the lock pin for a chest or something yeah it uh, looked kind of like there was some little ornate carving on it or i, I couldn't tell if it was that was just the corrosion though and yeah how about this 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 excited me i mm -hmm. i thought right away i thought like it was the edge of a stone sarcophagus that got you know chipped in transport and that's what fell but that's wow. just me going it's crazy know. with my speculation I, I, I thought it was something poured in concrete mm. ah. something something that came out of a concrete mold that he uh, sooner or later got broken yeah the ring could be part of machinery yes that's true could mm -hmm. be but yeah that's i mean part of a, a grave like you know i heard you say that earlier in the chat and i was like wow i had i, I had not thought well, about yeah that. Yeah, because I just thought carved out some. It could have been Bacon's tomb. Yeah, to me, maybe a lid. Um, yeah, 
or a grave marker. I don't know. Part of a vessel, like a some sort of a carved vessel, maybe. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. See, I love stuff like this because I love just wild guesses. <laughs> <laughs> well, people are tuning in here. Part of a tombstone, yeah, a chip piece of a stone chest or sarcophagus. Part a of a tombstone. Color. Yeah. Yeah. Rounded off. It has a rounded. It's been worked by a mason. You, oh, that's, yes, for sure. If, no if, doubt it's not, if it's not poured concrete, that has received some serious attention to get that uniformity. Look at it. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And a very good stone mason. I mean, rounded edges like that. I mean, mm -hmm. if it's stone and it's, you know, that's, I, I and you know, you wonder, and I was wondering, where's the rest of it? There has mm -hmm. to be more of it right now, there. We know where's they did the used to carve, you know, at the bottom. In, in the ancient times, the chalices were carved from stone. Yeah. Oh. Mortar and pestle. Ah, that's, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe. Mortar and pestle. Yeah. Yeah, mortar and pestle. I like that idea. Yep. I don't know. I, it's very interesting. And I I'm just keep wondering, where's the rest of it? Uh, I don't think it's a clay pot. They were talking about it being very sure that it's stone. So mm. yeah, I don't know. But interesting. Yeah, I had, uh, soapstone. Grinding stone. Grinding <laughs> stone. I don't know. Yeah. I love, I love when you guys are out there. You're guessing as much as I am on mm -hmm. this thing. I I don't feel so bad with some of my, you know, but I like to, I like to think of maybe it was a part of a, a tomb. Maybe, uh, maybe that's all that's left of the 90 foot stone. <laughs> Ooh. Awesome. 90 foot stone. Oh, we're going to be talking about that here in a couple of minutes, aren't we? Because we are ready to bring on our special guest. Uh, tell you what, we are at that point now and I, I was trying to hurry and get there. I didn't want uh, to the rest of the show badly in that respect, but, uh, Let's go ahead and uh, bring up our guest, Mr. Scott Clark. Sir, how are you today? I'm good, Jeff. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me back on again. Really appreciate it. Oh, man. I tell you what. I, you know, having you, seeing you out there again uh, on the, in the war room, uh, presenting and, and giving your, and talking about your book uh, and all of that, I, I, it's an honor for me to have you on the show, quite honestly. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. No, I, I enjoy being here. So there they had you in the war room once again, and, and you were talking about several different things um, about a map and Mr. Morris. Um, yeah. And I do have some pictures that we can show as we go along, but, you know, um, take us through that a little bit, if you would, if you don't mind. Yeah, I mean, if, for those who read my book, you're probably a little bit familiar with that. Um, so that Charles Morris map um, was something that I actually, at the time, you could not find it anywhere online. I had to, I purchased a copy from the Archives of Canada, and I uh, actually got permission from uh, from England to to use it in my book. And um, so basically, it's the very first map of Mahone Bay that clearly shows Oak Island. Uh, which is at the time called uh, Smith's Island. And uh, again, the map was created in uh, 1762. Charles Morris, as you see on the screen, was uh, Nova Scotia's uh, surveyor general, and he was also a longtime Freemason. Um, so there's the map right there you're looking at now. And uh, Oak Island kind of looks like a... You're 32nd level Freemason yourself, right? right? Yeah, so that that's Scottish Rite. There was, uh, back, back then, Scottish Rite didn't exist, I don't think. Uh, or it was just starting out. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely Morris was a Mason in in, uh, in Boston. And he also belonged to a lodge in Nova Scotia with uh, with a man named Isaac DeCoster, who was actually one of the guys who started Scottish Rite. Mm -hmm. And uh, he also came from, from Boston. Um, I believe both those guys were in on the, you know, if, if this was a Masonic project, which I believe very likely was, at least in part, Mm -hmm. uh, they both would have known about it. And of course, uh, by 1762, uh, Morris was working with Jonathan Belcher Jr., who was the uh, Lieutenant Governor of Nova Scotia and also the Grand Master of Freemasons. And oh, you're and, also linked to in, in uh, your, your heritage, right? Yeah, yeah. So distantly related to the Belchers. Uh, I have a direct relation to the Belchers, but they're sort of cousins of mine distantly. Wow, and um, so cool. a very a very interesting uh, three generations that I talk about in my book, between Jonathan, 
his dad, Jonathan Sr., and Captain Andrew Belcher, the grandfather. There's a good question that uh, Zane just brought up, and I thought uh, I have to ask you uh, that. Uh, he said, do we know who the Smith was named, uh, who the island was named Smith Island? Do we know who that was at the time? What Smith? I think, I think it was Edward Smith. He was one of the earlier, um, I'm not sure if he was related to John Smith, but he was one of the earliest Smiths on the island. And uh, that's that's an interesting question because in 1762, nobody was really there, right? It was it was just starting to be uh, the first lots were I think given out starting in 64, 65. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, I'm not exactly sure how Smith uh, did acquire it, but I know there was a very early <laughs> Edward Smith in that area. Yeah. Wow. All right. Zig, uh, Zane, that's your homework to go look that up and give us that <laughs> report next week on that. So yeah. <laughs> you got a name now work on that name. Now that you've been given that name, uh, you know, Scott, uh, before we get too far into this, I want to also, we are going to be giving away one of your books tonight. And I think that's we right. should do that right away while you're here, of course. And, uh, you had a, a very special, thing that you were going to sign the book, but also you're going to do a personal inscription for somebody on there, which yeah, I'm going to have to track you down one day. You're not that far from me, so I'm going to have to track <laughs> you down and get you to sign mine because I would be uh, love to have your you sign my book for me. Yeah, right? I'd be happy to. Yeah. So uh, let's bring Linda up. Linda, are you ready? And we can do the uh, we can do the spin the giveaway for this. A lot of people, I don't know if you had very many, uh, uh, would you get three or four people that wanted to get the book or um, yes. <laughs> More than 10, you would say. Yeah. More than 10, yes. More uh, than 70. Wow. <laughs> well, about 85. Okay, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's really good. I know a lot of people, and, and uh, folks, for those of you who uh, are curious about the giveaways, we do get things donated to us like uh, Scott has done here tonight. And uh, we do give those away on the show to be eligible for those giveaways. You have to be part of our Facebook group, which is the curse of Oak Island and beyond hyphen skinwalker ranch. And you uh, Linda will take, and she'll put up a picture as a post in our group of what that giveaway is for the coming week's show. And you can just simply make a comment to that post saying, yes, that automatically gets you entered. Uh, and but you must be pre present at the podcast to win. So if your name is chosen, you better jump out here and say, I'm here within like what 30 seconds because if not, we're mm -hmm. going to spin again. So we know we got a little bit of a delay. So, um, yeah, so, so whoever gets drawn, if you want to trade up, I've got one here that's got all the highlights in it now and everything. So <laughs> once he signs it, if you want to trade up, I'm open to you know offers. <laughs> I know I've I've kind of done the uh, yeah the same with mine uh, dog eared yeah. and yep yeah yep I know it's a good reference book it's a it's a fantastic book folks it really truly is and uh, again so whenever you're ready Linda we can do that all right all right I'm gonna put you in solo layout for a second so okay. we can see it spin there we go all right all love right. the hair though yeah. by the way the purple hair is awesome I know. <laughs> That's right. If you've got granddaughters, hair? you got to have purple hair. Oh, <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. Yes, it is. All right. Here we go, folks. A little higher. A little higher. Is it going to stop? Yep. It didn't go to da. It didn't go to da, but it stopped. Maybe you didn't spin it, it did. hard enough. Christy Kaler Strobeck. Christy, Christy, are you here? Christy, what is the last name? Strobeck. Strobeck. Christy, yep. are you here? She was here earlier. Oh, hopefully you are still here. We'll give her mm -hmm. a few seconds here to chime in. The book. Would you any idea where she uh, hails from? Nope. Ah, sure. there she is. I'm here. <laughs> All right. Christy, All where right. do you live? Congratulations. Yeah, you don't have to give us your address on the air, but just kind of us an idea. <laughs> right. She's going to send me her address. Yes, that's how you do it. You'll send your address direct message to Linda, and she will make sure that she gets that to Scott. Now, you also, Christy, uh, and you don't need to do it now. I guess we could do this later to say, <clears throat> let us know what you want said in the book as a personal message. And Scott said he would write that in there for you, right? Yep, definitely. You could say, like, to my friend Tom. <laughs> <laughs> just for linda 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, the book is available on Amazon. That's where I got my mm -hmm. copy. You can buy it there. And uh, Seth Likewise. just read this a few days ago, and he's been speed reading his way through that thing. Um, so, yeah. All Which right. is very, very easy to, to, to start and not be able to put down. You know what, you know, and I'm, I'm one of these people who generally, and I think I told Scott this before, I'm one of these people that generally, if I get a book, I start reading, I, I wait till the end of the day when I'm tired and everything. And I read a, a couple of pages and then I'm nodding off. Mm -hmm. That did not happen with this book. Did not How long happen. did it take you to compile all that book, Scott, just as a matter of. I mean, it was a good 15, you know, plus years, right? I started around um, 2005. And uh, like I said, I think I, I mentioned once before in the podcast, I was actually talking to one of the producers on the island a couple of years ago. And and I had so much material built up. They're the ones that suggested you should write a book. Uh -huh. And I thought, you know what? I, I, I thought about that years ago. It never happened. And, and so thanks to that suggestion, I really got focused and uh, put it together and, and uh, um, was very fortunate to have two publishers very interested the right the moment I sent him my manuscript. So, um, yeah, it's been a, it's been a great uh, great experience. Yeah. Uh, somebody's asking, is the book available as an ebook? I don't know. It is now. It just it just came out uh, on a Kindle edition. Oh, there you go. And um, actually, I, uh, as people probably saw last night, my book was featured on the show, which was uh, very exciting for me. And uh, uh, this morning uh, on Amazon, the both editions, the paperback and the Kindle zoomed up the charts wow, so, so kindle was like way down at like 1.7 million ranking because it had it just came out and i think it went up to 17,000 this morning so wow 1.6 wow, million man. jump that's a wow. huge jump that's fantastic scott yeah. I, congratulations yeah. I mean, well, it doesn't it doesn't last it's it's sort of a yeah comes and goes in spurts but it, it's still amazing to to have that yeah well yep. you deserve it and more it's i agreed with mark one of the comments that went by said it, it's his favorite oak island book to date and i agree with them you know there i know there's a lot out there i haven't read them all but so yeah, far I got right up here this yep. one's my favorite and yeah. i, I want to thank you for sharing the personal aspects of your journey like yes. with your family and with god um because it, it's really spoken to me and uh this watching this show and and being a part of the fan base has definitely impacted me and my own relationship with god and others and you know so so thank you for sharing that personal part of the story it's it's really i love it because yeah, th that's pleasure. what that's what uh, a big part of i think what the laginas are, are carrying you know forward with their legacy is is the, the people are the treasure and uh you're yep. you're you're part of that and you know so thank you for sharing <laughs> that your personal story <laughs> yeah thank you so we get back to uh, the, uh, you know, you've been, oh, see you later, Linda. Bye, Thank Linda. you. <laughs> Bye, Linda. Thank you so much. You know, obviously, as the show has been going on this season, there has been a lot of information about things that they've been finding in lot five. And they keep talking about how they find some of these metal things. And Emma has this database, or I guess they sent some things over from um, Phipps' birthplace that they now can look at the metallurgy and say, Oh, this is a perfect match for those things. So, I mean, we we're here in Phipps on every single episode. Oh, I know. Yeah. I, I actually know the person that was involved. Um, I believe his name is Frank white and really? he is a direct descendant of Sir William Phipps's wife's second husband. Wow. So when Phipps Phipps passed away at a very young age, um, unexpectedly, and uh, she later, later later married into the White family, and it's a direct descendant of theirs that that I believe sent um, objects into the show. Uh, they they were in talks somehow, and uh, so yeah, that's how they got those very specific metallurgical. Okay. And uh, I know that it's there's been some confusion on. I I've heard Phipps is they, they've called him a, a British or an English nobleman, which of course he's not. He's He's from uh, from the colonies, you know, pre pre America. Uh, he was born in Maine on the Sheepscot River, so that's the area where it came from. Was that Sheepscot River area of Maine, where he had a shipbuilding enterprise at one time? So and and so, if you don't mind, I know, and I, I and I know we've got so many things to talk about, but how? So he was commissioned to go look for from from England to go look for 
de Concepcion. So yeah, he he originally went to England and um, tried to get the king to back. He actually did get the king to back him to go down uh, with a ship and search for treasure. He found a little bit of treasure at first. Um, it wasn't even enough to cover the damage of the ship when he got back. Oh wow! So so um, the king was not happy with him. Um, so um, uh, what was it? So he, eventually he ended up getting um, the Duke of Albemarle to to back him. And uh, that was a private investor. And uh, um, so Albemarle got some of his friends. He was he was a, a man used to gambling. And, and uh, um, but there's also some really interesting connections with Albemarle. His personal physician, Dr. Hans Sloan, was a very early Freemason in Rosicrucian. And uh, I believe he knew the map maker, Herman Mole, the one that created that map in 1701. Yes, I remember that. shows La, La Plata in, in Nova Scotia. So yes. there's some really interesting connections there. Hmm. Um, but yeah, so it was it was the Duke of Albemarle that found, uh, funded the first uh, um, big um, trip down where he actually found the Concepcion, uh -huh. brought back all the silver, he was knighted, um, and then he was actually uh, appointed by the king governor of, of the Dominion of New England. Oh, wow. which included which included Nova Scotia and Oak Island at that time at that yeah okay um, mm -hmm. and then the second time it was the king himself that sent him back down to try and get more and that's when he came back with like 120th of what he was expected to come, come back with right and and there, there's that the duke of mordaunt is involved in that as well with the glorious revolution and it gets a bit complicated but i i definitely believe that at least some of that silver made its way to Oak Island yeah it makes sense. I mean, it really does, especially when, yeah, yeah, when there was a ship. The Belcher had one of the ships, uh, I, and I don't know how many ships there were, but uh, didn't Captain Belcher have a ship that ended up over in Mahone Bay? So, so Belcher owned many ships. He had at least, I think, close to twenty ships. Mm -hmm. uh, he he became quite rich, and um, it wasn't his ship. He was caught trading with pirates, uh -huh. um, and then one of the pirate ships made their way to Mahone Bay and uh was said to have gone to this place called port la bear which is very close to oak island uh -huh. so there's there's a yeah there's numerous historical pointers and then there's the of course the finding of silver on the island there's they still haven't talked about my i found uh the uh, newspaper articles from the six the 1860s showing that silver ingots were found on oak island really um uh, six of them were found on oak island and they by the description, they could have very well have been Concepcion coins. And I was looking for them. I, I They went missing. I, I sort of had tracked them for a while. And then, mm. um, so they're out there somewhere. Somebody probably has them in a private collection, or maybe they're buried in a vault or something. But mm. that, that, that could prove right there. <laughs> yeah, good. Wow. good. Very well. Interesting. Uh, here's a question from uh, uh, Obscure Archive, uh, Jeff uh, Jet. Uh, from Western, uh, from West Michigan. First time here. Thank you for joining us tonight. Appreciate it. Uh, fantastic book, he says. Uh, in it, you mentioned Blankenship and Tobias drilled boreholes below the bedrock and discovered wood, brass, and an iron plate. Any comments on any of that? Um, so that's all coming from other books that I that I researched that I used as as uh, background. But um, the iron plate, I'm not sure about. I know that they. They suggested it was an iron plate. Rick was actually interested in that. He asked me to look up uh, information to further that. Uh -huh. And um, I, I, th I believe what happened was they found borings or, 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 or flakes of iron. Uh -huh. And um, they tested it with a magnet and they, it was iron. And they assumed there was an iron plate. Uh -huh. So, um, but yeah, they went right down into the bedrock. I mean, it's, it's a pretty amazing. That's what I keep saying. You know, they need to go into the bedrock. To me, that's where everything, you know, because when you see any kind of pictures of, you know, like the Templars when they were making, a, a, you know, tunnels and whatnot under the ground, they're always in rock. They're not in dirt. They're in rock. So, you know, so in my mind, it's like, well, yeah, get there. Like, oh, we hit bedrock. Time to stop. No, keep going. Keep going. You know, and now we've got that high density anomaly that was picked up on the muon sensors at 235 feet or 230 feet uh, down in the bedrock. So I'm like. Yeah, see, keep digging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> well, a lot of those old drill programs, they dug a shaft down 80 or 90 feet, and then they drilled. Mm -hmm. Right? They would start the drilling from 80 or 90 feet, go down through mud, clay, whatever, hit bedrock, go through bedrock, and hit sometimes void, wood. Mm 
what they think might be concrete. Like, yeah. Yeah. Go deep. Yeah. yeah, go exactly. Get down there. And I know that you've been on, you know, you've been involved, as you mentioned just earlier, uh, 2005, I think you said uh, that you've been involved in the Oak Island. You, you had gone out there before the Laginas even bought into uh, the, the treasure hunt themselves um and i know we and anybody that wants to check it you need to go back and watch the first podcast actually i think we've done two with you so far but you need to go back and watch the most recent one before this one uh where we had you on and you covered a lot of that stuff and you're in your beginnings that uh seth was just talking about as well um and all the people that you know danny henniger and all the other people that charles barkhouse and people that were on the island and giving tours because you went out to the original tours out there as well um, yeah. So, yeah, those were those were good times back then, and the original forum that we used to have, uh, uh, Petter Petter Amundsen and yeah, uh, yeah Petter, yeah, uh, D Doug Kroll and Kel Hancock and Danny and and uh, Joy, um, what's her last name? Uh, but there's been several. There's been at least I think three, you know, three or four people that have written books and been on the show, and and uh, uh, Terry DeVoe as well. Yeah, Terry. Um, yep. So yeah, that, that was. Uh, that was all sort of pre pre Laginas, and then the Laginas came in in 2006, and I I was there the first time they were on the island with their jeep, and I got some pictures of them. And oh, there's a, looks there's so a really so good one in your book. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The picture you got a picture of that jeep in your book here too. So uh, yeah, but and, you know that's kind of cool. And then how you lay out everything, you know, from then on, going through the timeline is just fantastic. Let's get back to this map a little bit now, Morris. Um, you know, is that now he was, was he, what was his title again for, for Nova Scotia? Chief, Chief surveyor. Chief surveyor. Um, and it was actually, there was actually three generations all really? named Charles Morris and they were all wow. subsequent chief surveyors of Nova Scotia. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's Jinx. Kind of like Give me a soda, Jeff. Family. What's that? <laughs> oh, we said wow at the same time. So I oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's pretty incredible. Um, and, you know, and some of the connections that you made, um, you know, here we got that little picture of Smith's Island, you know, and, and named Smith before it was. Now we know Edward Smith. Yeah, before it was Oak Island. Island. Um, and then you talked about finding the A, uh, the differences in the A's. Talk about that a little bit. How did you, was it, was it, were you just scanning the map and you just happened to come across it or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was. I, I think I even had the map for a couple of years before I even sat down and closely looked at it, and and uh, and that was the first thing that I think jumped out at me was the, you know, I I looked at the uh, the word Mahone and I saw this little, you know, B shaped crossbar, which sort of reminded me of a Masonic compass and square. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that the A and B was just a regular A, and I'm like, hey, this is this is unusual, and and. And um, I don't know if you heard, but um, like Francis Bacon used to do things like that. He used to incorporate different styles of letters into yeah. into Every time he changed the he changed the font or a letter style or type. Yeah, yeah, right. So or it's, or, it's, or, or an letter or typo. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So it's a known. Yep. Um, yeah. And then, uh, and then of course um, they didn't show it last night. But to me, one of the most interesting. What I believe to be a cipher is what I call the triple tau cipher. Yes. There's a, there's a, a yep. T on the map as well that also points directly to Oak Island when you make a line through the stem of the T. And a triple tau in masonry literally means um, um, a place where a precious thing is concealed. Like, and it, it pointed, in my mind, I, I also identified a, a specific area on Oak Island, which I call the tau path. Mm -hmm. And um, so we actually did investigate that when i was at, at oak island in the summer but uh that unfortunately has not been shown yet on tv and yeah. and then the third the third cipher was actually um uh, unfortunately they didn't mention on the show but that that's the one that chris morford found uh uh -huh. so you guys know christopher morford mm -hmm. who's been yes. on the show with oh yeah yep. 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 i had sent him a copy a draft copy of that presentation and he found the the arc of the letters making the circle so you know, it was just it was just amazing. Like three three different things that all all pointed directly <laughs> to Oak Island. Yep. I'm gonna and, show uh, uh, I'm gonna put this up to the camera real quick so folks can see this. It's in his book, obviously. Um, and you see that S and then that T. So it's a T with two dots below it, which I uh, interpreted so it's a tau symbol with dot dot, which I interpreted as possibly etc. Mm -hmm. which which means further similar things. So tau yep. and tau and tau. 
-hmm. And to me, that could be incorporated as a cipher. Right. And the only other place I found that used was actually the uh, the um, lodge in Boston. Oh, yeah. um, uses the same show. cipher, a very similar mm -hmm. T with two dots, and that's where uh, that's where um, I yeah. mentioned Isaac yeah. Coster. Yeah. The other interesting thing you mentioned too was that the T was a capital T and not a small T. Right. When they were spelling right, saint. Quite often, when you yeah. see saint, it's with a small T. Yeah. So it was an unusual way of showing the saint symbol, the, the saint abbreviation. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, they did. They did. I think on the show, they they kind of put me on the spot where I think Rick said, "Is that the only?" Morris map that has these V shaped yeah, mm -hmm. and I believe I said I think it was, but um, mm -hmm. I think there actually is another, at least one other map out there where the he did incorporate those uh, V shaped crossbars, but it was on every letter, it was on every capital A. Oh wow! So mm -hmm. uh, that was I think six six years prior, seventeen fifty five. But no. this map, you've been map analyzing that map, <laughs> <laughs> and also those. You're stuff. Right those two dots you kind of draw a dotted line too to another uh, oak island legend which is the 90 foot stone and right yeah marks there's, there's on the, 90 foot stone. the symbol the same symbol which is like a colon symbol right mm -hmm. now speaking of which and seth brought this up earlier what's your thoughts on the 90 foot stone i mean some I mean, people uh, it doesn't exist it was absolute you know yeah, yeah. I, I, i've been all around over the years i mean i, I lately i found information that that uh as I mentioned in the book, that, that some of those symbols that are believed to be on there were actually uh, among the very earliest Masonic marks, Mason marks in Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. And the very first man who conducted the first Mark Master degree in all of North America, um, Adam Fife, was in Halifax. And three weeks later, he was conducting Chester Lodge, the very first meeting of Chester Lodge, with five Oak Island lot owners. So there's there's a direct connection between Mark Master Masons and Oak Island lot owners who are Freemasons. Wow. So the, you know, connections, the connections that you draw in the book between the people that are Masons <laughs> and where they grew up and who they knew and where they were from. Like people yeah. you gotta read it because you're not you're not if you don't see it in black and white and he lays it out very well, you'll read you'll read it and you'll go, Holy smokes, where have I been? Why didn't I know this? Yep. Yeah. yeah. And there yeah. was there was speculation way back that oh yeah there was probably a, a mason on Oak Island but I, I I found clear evidence that there was at least six or more wow. um, pre 1795 Freemasons owning lots owning a, at least a third of the island and potentially more um, yeah. so that lot number five that we were talking about now that's that's shown so much on TV was originally owned by Timothy Lynch and Timothy Lynch both of his sons became masons in Chester Lodge. Mm -hmm. So there's a very good chance that Timothy himself was a Freemason um, because the re main reason Masons or people who became Masons were usually fo following in their father's footsteps or the grandfathers and uh, the tradition. So uh, there's there could be a connection between him and as well as Casper Wollenhoeft, the original owner of uh, the Money Pit Lot. Uh, his his son also became a Freemason in, in Nova Scotia. So. I yeah, mean, there's a really interesting. Yeah, it makes you wonder. <laughs> to me, are they protecting something? Or did they know something? I mean, I, you know, I, I, I love to speculate as you know, right. You probably. So I think. Might. Go ahead, please. Sorry, I was going to say quickly. I, I think that you know, um, I said that. Uh, so, um, Captain Andrew Belcher's son, Jonathan Senior, was a lodge brother of Jonathan Prescott. Jonathan Prescott became one of the very first lot owners on Oak Island. He owned two lots. And it makes sense to me that he was there to oversee and protect, knowing what had been put there before. See, that's mm. what I'm wondering. Yeah. Wow. So, and Morris, you know, obviously, and we're gonna, I'm going to go back to that to the map again because you drew this, and I and I did not have this, you know, put together in my brain. I said, I, I to me, it seemed very interesting that this. You know that the A would have that V, the crossbar, you have being a V in it, and then you drew it the connection with the um, the, the Mason symbol. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know it's a very common symbol. A lot of people out there, skeptics, are like, "Oh, you know, it's just an A." You know, it's uh, and and that of course that's true. It's it's it is just an A to most people, but it can of course be used as a as uh, a cipher or a symbol for something else. Yep. And and there's there's I've definitely seen some evidence that that could be the case, 
in in Templar churches in Europe that 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 symbol uh, definitely could stand for the Holy Grail in the minds of a certain group. Yeah. And I actually showed what they showed on the show last night. There was actually two better examples. Again, I, I don't know why they didn't show it, but <laughs> there was two much more compelling examples which weren't shown. Well, which and may or may not be showing later in the season. So right, and, and you have this, you have this A here. In 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 folks, you look at this, and this was this was clearly on the show last night. Looking at this A in Mahone that has Mahone, you know, for Mahone Bay has that dropped or that V crossbar in it, and then the other A over here in Bay does not at all. Right. And you take a line and you draw it up from this one, and it points right at Oak Island. That's mm -hmm. Here you have. Us. It's not a coincidence. It's, it's yeah. Not and you have to imagine those guys don't when they when they were making those things. They don't make those types of mistakes. No. Yeah, and you have right. to think that this was created 33 years before the money pit was discovered. So we all know that Oak Island's famous, right? It's like oh, a big deal. It points to Oak Island. But if it's you know, you didn't know any better, and you found this unusual A, and then it's a pointer. Then okay, what's so special about this island, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. There's something special about this particular place. Well, I mean, it's like you were talking about with the the, the lineage of family members and them all being Freemasons. Obviously, there was family information being shared, but to the uninitiated, would they be able to recognize, you know, where the signs where they're putting them? And uh, I, you Correct. know, so it's I, I don't, you know, I don't think it was enough to just be the son of someone. I think you. I'm assuming or speculating that you would have to kind of prove yourself to be initiated into this ability to see those secret, you know, arrows pointing which way to look. Yeah, I'm sure very few people were in on that. If if, if I'm correct about this this theory that mm -hmm. that it was probably the uh, certain members of the lodge in, in Boston who mm -hmm. came over to Nova Scotia, mm -hmm. so that that Belcher Morris connection. Um, and like you said, later Freemasons may have recognized symbols like right. the triple tau or the, or the A or, you know, knowing it's, a you know, similar to a square and compass and, right. Um, but yeah, yeah. And there you have the three, cause that's something, you know, Seth, Seth just mentioned that the other so, things on the map, you look around, go ahead, please. So what they didn't say on here was that, that on this map, there's, um, I think there's seven or eight regular A's with straight lines. And there's only four that have this special V-shaped crossbar. So it isn't like those are all over the place. There's only four of them. One is in Mahone. Mm -hmm. And and even in, um, you can't see it here, but it says on the map, it says part of St. Margaret's Bay. The A in part doesn't have a crossbar. It uh, doesn't have mm -hmm. a Masonic script. It has a straight line. So um, again, utilizing those three through the compass rose on the map, which is also a sort of, Masonic Rosicrucian symbol. It takes you directly to Oak Island. Is what's the significance, if you can talk about it, like of that arc going through the Compass Rose? Is that part of the like journey that you would have? One would have to take to discover the treasure. Like, I mean, not necessarily. I mean, it is. It is. I believe a a symbol that that Rosicrucians and Masons knew more about back in the day um it's not necessarily part of the journey though on this map i think the map is more just as, as a pointer well not not like a physical journey but more i guess more of like a story you know the, the, the symbol like you know hero's journey sort of thing is there like <laughs> i was just curious so if you know what obviously he wanted the, the compass rose in this royal arc so i was curious if that was if this royal arc is almost telling us a story uh, in some could be, yeah. Um, Some I just thought it all, yeah, fit together very well the way it, you know. Oh, it does, and I, it's uh, in the book, you know, that this, like I told you before we started, this really was blowing my mind. I kept stopping and telling my wife, "Did you know?" Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, I did the same. Thing. Yeah, I did the same thing. And here you can see too, also that the uh, um, uh, that St. Well, as soon as that S A, why would that bay name be? Art, uh, if not clue of some sort, yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, why yeah. would it be? Why wouldn't it just be written straight? But here, also down here at the bottom, you can see that T of the right. ST, the capital T, and the yeah. uh, two dots under it. So, yeah, you can kind of catch that on the bottom yeah. there. 
So, yeah, another interesting little tidbit. Right. You know, you're exactly right. No other word on here is arc like that. You know, have that. Have that. Why? Yeah. Exactly, it, had, yeah. Again, it had to mean something. And there you go with Chris Morford. You know, Christopher is always looking for that kind of stuff. How they go, how those guys can spot these things. I mean, I, he's a I, smart guy, too. He's he's yeah. <laughs> yes. He's, he a long, he's a long time Mason as well. And yeah, very knowledgeable. Yep. Yeah, so you, but you again, you look at these other words and none of them uh, are arc. You see the stamp down here, that is, but that's not part of the original map. Uh, right. but yeah, yeah, so very, very interesting uh, stuff there for sure. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it, you know, so many times you you look at these things and you have to say, well, it takes a, it takes like, or, you know, John Edwards always says it takes a village. It takes a bunch of people because, you know, other people are going to see things that you don't. Um, and, and when you can involve that, so, so many, I've talked about this before about how many, so many researchers are like, they're holding this to, you know, I'm not going to let the secret out, you know, <laughs> sometimes it's a good thing. You get more people involved in this. And if all, I think that you, you look back at all the researchers that have talked, including yourself, who have talked about their theory for Oak Island. It turns out, you know, as we are starting to learn with the multi-generational use of the Island, possibly that maybe all all of you are right to a degree that all these theories may come together and become the story of Oak Island. Not everybody's, but most of them, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So you get all these people get, if you guys could all just get in a room together and figure this out. We'd I've actually, it. yeah, I, I've suggested that. I think we, I talked to someone about that on the Island one year that we should get all the, you know, myself and James McQuiston and Corey and, and everybody, you know, get all the theorists together and, and brainstorm, have a, have a session in the war room and, Yep, exactly. It's been a couple of days. <laughs> yeah, everybody's going to have a piece of that time capsule puzzle, right? This, yeah. this whole Oak Island mystery didn't happen over the over fifty years. No, right? It happened over five hundred years. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's got to be different pieces of that puzzle that just different experts are going to be able to piece in for you. Yep. This picture I mean, but, here. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, please. No, I was going to say ultimately it comes down to like what they they dig up, right? They're going to. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to have theories, and and I, I I I still think that the Phipps theory is the most plausible based on all the evidence out there. Mm -hmm. But unless you actually do find Concepcion coins or something, yeah, I don't know mm -hmm. how you would ever yeah. say, okay, yeah, he's he was right, you know, or yeah. or that's that's the theory. You'd have to really. <laughs> but it's and that, very... that's my worry that you know the show, mm -hmm. you know, what's going to happen with the show down the road? Are they going to find you know? Are they just going to miss it? Are they just, you know, is it, was it there well, and now it's been taken away? You know, that, that's a very strong possibility. Did so, someone leave a definitive clue behind that's going to really nail down one time period? We can only yeah. hope. Yeah. And I know that's what Rick wants. He wants, and, he wants and, and that would just be one time period. I mean, there could be other clues for other time periods, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, part of the show talked about this right here. And this is where you just simply showed another A. Um, who was this again? Uh, Gualdem Pays, I believe his name is. He was the uh, Templar Grand Master in Portugal. And uh, I was told by by a Templar expert that 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 the A on his um, tombstone could be a Grail symbol. So that's why I brought that up. I brought up three examples of places they'd actually been to. That's why uh, Alex was like, "Yeah, yep, you know, yep, yep, I've been there." <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are because they so, have. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was using uh, th those are the three examples they showed were the three that I I use uh, of places they've been to. Oh. The other two that are that I thought were more compelling, they didn't show those yet. So yeah. So that's that's the um, uh, João de Castillo, the um, Convent of Christ. Yep. Also in Portugal, so the the Knights of Christ. And uh, same thing. It's got a similar. They're all a little bit different, but it's got the A with the V-shaped crossbar. Right. And that was apparently part of his signature. And okay. he was a master. He was a master architect. Yeah. And again, it's very distinct. And it has those two, like, dots on the top. Dots above, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Does that have a different meaning? Does that make it more or less of something? Or is it just Probably. His... I, I don't know the hmm. Portuguese significance, but. Uh, um... Okay, yeah. Yeah. Now, here's a question I have to ask you. And this dawned on me. As I was putting the show together today, and and I thought, oh, I've got to ask uh, Scott about this tonight. Um, you know, you you were talking about this uh, this picture right here. 
um, on the pillar. And this is in the church, uh, the uh, Saint uh, Santa Maria uh, Nuova, Nuova Church in yeah. Yeah. Verde, how do you pronounce that? Ver, Vertebro, Italy? Uh, Viterbo, I think. Viterbo, mm. thank you. Okay, and this is, we saw this last season when the guys went over to, uh, no, oh, they, when they went overseas and they saw this, and this is something that Alex had pointed out. Now, and they incorporated this into the top 10 theories, I think. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. and he was saying Templar treasure here or something like that, or Templar gold here, but I came across something else. If that A, by you said some of the researchers, the Portuguese researchers say it means the Holy Grail, and the H-I-C in Latin means here, here, in this place, yeah. Could that not say in this place is the Holy Grail? Yeah, no, exactly. I thought about that too. Um, and there's the whole Roslyn Chapel idea that there's something buried within the apprentice pillar in Roslyn as well. Um, there's definitely a a, um, um, a stories back, going way back in, in, in Portugal in that time that, that talk about this Gualdem Pays bringing the Grail to Portugal. Uh -huh. and and is it possible it was there and moved to Oak Island? That That is another, you know, possibility. But, yeah, I, I thought the same thing. Like, you know, here here is the grail. Maybe it's inside this There's, pillar. It's, it's hollow Maybe it's in that pillar or in that church. And yeah, I'm or thinking, it was at one time, or, yeah. Or, or mm -hmm. it was, correct. And I'm yeah, thinking, yeah. oh, my gosh, get a scanner over there and scan I mean, that pillar. We know the Portuguese had the manpower, the technology, and the means to make it across the ocean, so. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's the next most evidence-based theory is port portuguese on oak island right so yeah so, so that's um, what i was thinking that's why i did the the uh that's what i was talking about with the tonight's thumbnail um because i thought wow is that telling us right there if that a stands for to some stood for the the holy grail is that not telling us right there here it is i don't know i mean it's hidden it's in plain possible. sight in plain sight, right, and it's it even says so on the pillar. So I mean, yeah, and they yeah. also would have had the technology to be able to to maybe put something in that pillar or in that church. It doesn't mean it's in that pillar, um, but maybe in that church. I don't know. Um, yep, interesting. Amazing yeah, and they, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, they were talking about it here, Templar gold. I'm thinking here is the is the uh, holy grail. <laughs> the holy grail. Yeah, I mean, so. Um, as we go through the rest of that, I mean, you have so much more information on that, you know, with your map that, you know, there, there was, I know there's parts of it that may come out later on. And so there has to be, so some of the stuff we can't get too deep into, but what else about that? We know you were probably in that war room for a long time. I don't want to put you on the spot because I know that there's, like I said, there's probably portions of this you can't talk about yet because it may still come out on the show, but Right. Is there anything else you can enlighten us on about, you know, what, um, you know, obviously all the stuff that's in your book here uh, about this theory of uh, the FIPS and, uh, and the connection with the Templars? I mean, they were trying to paint that connection with the Templars. How do you right. feel about that? I mean, is that something that, you know, you were on board with or? Um, yeah, I, I was a bit surprised they, they sort of went that way. I mean, I. My, I, I was talking for, for a good hour and a half in the war room. Um, and I also did uh, a fair bit of work on the island uh, the next day, walking around with Gary Drayton, doing metal detecting, which was amazing, and uh, um, doing some ground penetrating radar work. Um, so that was what I was hoping would be shown on the show and still might be. Um, I can't say, obviously, anything more than that. But um, and then the other so part, fun, of by the way. <laughs> yeah, and, and then, right. what a dream. Yeah. Um, so then the, the first part of my presentation was focused on that connection to the to the A. Uh, so I had done a lot of research prior to that. Um, so once I was told by this this um, Templar historian that oh your A symbol on your Morris map looks just like this symbol in in Portugal, which is said to potentially be the Grail. So then I did a lot of research on that aspect. And um, as I mentioned, there was actually two much more compelling places I found it. One was in France, one was in Spain. That really connects much more to the Holy Grail history. 
Um, so I'm hoping they'll show that down the road. That's not in the book. So that's that's the only part that's not in my book is that that mm. Holy Grail connection. Oh. Um, of course, everything to do with the map, with the with the um, with the third cipher, the the triple tau. Uh, to me, that's really interesting as well. And and that was something we also focused on while I was there. But um, again, I'm hoping it'll be shown this year. But if not, you can read about it in the book. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but there was some interesting things that came out of it, which I. I thought we're show worthy for sure, but we'll see. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, I, and I really am on board. You know, I, we, we've learned so much about Phipps and Belcher um, and, and that connection there. Um, and now we're finding all these things in lot five where it kind of almost means that does it mean that they were there. Not, we don't have that definitive proof yet, but man, yeah. things are lining up that way for sure. I mean, it's, well, when you look at, at, at the close proximity of where Phipps was born, grew up and had a shipyard, I mean, it's like a straight line across to the south tip of Nova Scotia. So yeah. dis distance-wise, like it's, I don't know, with a good wind a day sail, I don't know. But, and it leads yeah. you back to the question was, well, okay, why of all places did these people decide they were going to set up shop in Maine? Close enough by that we can get back and forth in a hurry? Yeah. And I, I don't even know if Phipps himself was ever on Oak Island. I just, mm -hmm. I, I believe that his people, you know, through, yeah. through oh, Belgium yeah, sure. and... Yeah. And um, uh, the the Duke of Albemarle's yeah. uh, son, which I mentioned in the book as well, he has a suspicious activity involved with the wreck and and doing certain things. And so so I, definitely they I think oversaw it. They were the ones who found the treasure and had a plan. But then um, I think as I mentioned in my book, I think what happened was as as Graham Harris and Les McPhee talked about, there was a blowout and and whatever was there just you know collapsed mm -hmm. and, and got scattered. And that's why we've we've had years and years of utility almost uh in, in mm -hmm. terms of finding specifically treasure uh -huh. but um yeah i i mean i mean they're they're getting closer hopefully they're finding uh you know scientific traces you know large amounts of silver and gold in different places under underground and stuff I'm gonna that shouldn't be where it is yeah. i'm gonna put you on the spot do you believe there's treasures on oak island still or um once? i do believe there was and and i would like to believe there still is yeah for sure um I mean, I, I, I was quite compelled about the story about, uh, um, who was it, uh, William Crooker, I think, in his book, talks at the very end about how in the Vaughn family, there's the story of how they found these these bags of gold that were in a chest. Uh -huh. And one of, the, one of the relatives apparently left and actually went to Toronto or something, disappeared, never heard from again. But, but the grandson, Mosher, talked about how he saw these bags from his grandmother and they were found on Oak Island mm -hmm. and and you hear stuff like that and you wonder, hmm, was that, you know, <laughs> well, it, you know, and there's a story too of, of, uh, I think it was Anthony Vaughn and his brother owned a lumber mill on Oak Island. And shortly after the discovery of the money pit, uh, Anthony bought his brother out and his brother came okay. over here to New Brunswick to St. Martin's and set up his own shipyard and sawmill. Right. Yeah. yeah, and then there's the stories of Samuel Ball. You know, Samuel, I was just going to say Samuel Ball. Yeah. yeah there, there's a lot of stories out there mm -hmm. that, allude to possible treasure having been found and yep but even if they just find one concepcion coin you know 200 feet down that that's all you need yeah <laughs> there you go case closed. No. Yep. Yeah, case closed uh dean barker has a question scott why was the ship named concepcion i that I, I don't know i don't know do you know so the a lot of the ships were so it actually means uh it's, it's the nuestra senora which is our lady of the immaculate conception so, so it's basically the virgin mary and I think from what I've heard, like 20, 25 percent of all Spanish ships were named after the Virgin Mary. Oh, wow. So that they all have this Nuestra Senora something, something. And um, I, I actually had a, I found that interesting because as I was doing this research into the Holy Grail, mm -hmm. uh, the, the history really goes back to the Virgin Mary. And, and there's a there's a definite connection between her and the Grail. And and then the Concepcion was named after her. <laughs> I know it's just a you know, not a not a real connection, but it's just no. I mean, it, it's yeah, it, it could be though, right? It's like it's like the the map. It's it's uh, there's significance and and names. I think I think so much is done with intention, and it's there in plain sight for those that know to see you know to see. Could be yeah. 
Interesting. See, uh, Henry oh. made a comment. Henry made a comment there that uh, the medal found in a lot of five matches the medal of Phipps' birthplace, which we know. Yep. But Phipps' father was a blacksmith, gunmaker. Hmm. What else did we find on Oak Island? Oh, right. The yeah. Ram, the ramrod. The ramrod part, and the there was also the uh, the firing mechanism for yep. uh, a, a a pistol or a blunderbuss. Mm -hmm. We don't know exactly what it was, but there was actually the whole firing mechanism and the. The hammer and all of that was found too. Very well done. See, uh, Linda Simmons says, Tom, is there, isn't there a story of the Vaughn finding treasure in New Brunswick? Well, there's two stories to that. One is that he found treasure. The other is that he brought treasure with him and buried it um, when his brother bought him out. And he kept a stash out on the, actually it's the Vaughn River in St. Martin's. Wow. So, yeah. So the treasure could have been there. Maybe they did find it and they never just told anybody because they didn't want it to get out. You never know. But I still, I believe like with you, Scott, that, that there was, may still be hopefully, but there was. And the only thing I go back to the still be there uh, factor is when you talk to Dr. Ian Spooner, mm -hmm. uh, or Dr. Michaels and the, and uh, Ian had told me flat out, that with the amount that they have, the concentration of the uh, gold and silver they found in the water tells them that it has to still be there. Right. So, yeah. I mean, that, you know, Something, you know. yeah, yeah. Well, it's mostly the silver, a little bit of gold now that they're finding as well, but, uh, but mostly the silver. So he said, yeah, it has to still be there uh, to get with, that much. Without, without that water, the, their ability to find gold in the water and silver, I would be on the, the team of, there's nothing there anymore. Whatever was there was taken away in secret uh, but without our knowledge. But thank goodness for the science being able to show. And and I kind of just had this thought and I kind of wanted to thank Scott for it. But Scott, you kind of talk a little bit about the spiritual side of the island. Um, you know, and you, in the very beginning, you said you, you got to hear a famous psychic in one of your early tours, you know, talk about what they thought happened on the island. And, and just talking about, you know, like one of the reasons why I think gold is still there is that the island seems to still be, you know, be fuddling in us at every chance it can. Uh, I, 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 I think, and on the same token, if I'm going to think the island has some form of consciousness or will, I also think it's drawing all of our attention to it still because there is something there that it wants us to learn from, uh, whether it's gold or a story or, or just the history or, or something more spiritual and deeper. I don't know, but it's calling to us. And I feel like we all feel it. And, and we we're getting closer and it, it, this is more than a treasure hunt. This is a deeper discovery of ourselves and uh, your books, such an important part of that. So this has just been such an exciting thing. And I'm sorry. I'm, over enthusiastic <laughs> no no not, no don't be sorry at all um but yeah it's uh i know i'm a little woo woo for some people but i i think i you know i i uh i think there is a spiritual side of the island that the show doesn't get into too often but i often think about and wonder about um right so thanks for sharing that in your book and if, like I see a lot of people talking about they've bought it. If you if you're on the fence, go ahead and buy it, folks. Because it's well, there's quite a few people that said they bought it tonight. They they ordered oh, a copy or they got excellent. the uh, they got the uh, Kindle version, the ebook version. Um, yeah, and you, we need to we need to get a uh, you you need to get yourself a microphone and all that and and go ahead and just narrate it and get it out there as an audio book <laughs> as well. So yeah. that's right. <laughs> do that as well actually so, no, uh, it, it, i believe it is an audiobook i because i helped oh, them uh oh okay they, they did a, they did a book for the blind way back when i when it first oh, came out okay. they uh i had to do some descriptive text for for, for the photos mm -hmm. oh cool I so because like oh. yeah. i usually go for the audiobooks first so oh that'd be interesting <laughs> out there yeah so um well i tell you what it's been a lot of fun let's uh I, one last thing i wanted to show everybody uh whoops not that uh <laughs> was the uh the the uh, next time on the Curse of Oak Island for next week. Um, uh, let's see here. A couple of things that popped up for next time. Of course, they're uh, they're still working in Lot Five, and they found something. We saw we saw a little like uh, a uh, little picture of um, Jamie finding something, and everybody was like, "Ooh, looking at it." And Laird said, "We never got to see what it was. It was hidden. Uh, they never got gave us a close up." I, I tried uh, to get it. But uh, that didn't work out. But we did get um, Mr. Carmen Leg, our friend Carmen, uh, and he was in the uh, 
uh, interpretive center or in the lab, and he was looking at a couple of things in there, and he was looking at that chain, and he said uh, to lift uh, a, a chest onto a wharf, just like that picture showed. So that was pretty cool. So really interested to see what uh, oops what he found uh, what he came up with on that, uh, and also the last thing was that last week we were looking down at Aladdin's cave and we were looking at the camera shot of that, and uh, the one thing on that camera shot that that I had pointed out uh, during the show was the right angle of that one shot. They were looking into the black area, saying, "Well, this would be where the tunnel goes." Uh, and then they finally, they, they have Steve getting all excited and showing them uh, that it truly is a uh, right angle right there. And nature does not very, you know, make right angles very well. So, you know, is it, you know, I mean, what, what do you think, Scott? I'm just kind of curious uh, what your take in on that is, you know, uh, Aladdin's cave and these voids that they're finding down there, man-made or natural? I mean, like you said, uh, nature doesn't make right angles like that, right? It looks very, uh, very precise. Yeah, it sure so, does. So from that that shot, it looks it looks man made for sure. Yeah, and then C one so, at uh, C one had those pieces of iron down there that we did see a camera shot of those. It looked like iron, like wrought iron was down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So even if man didn't make the tunnels or the cavities, he was down there. There was people down there. So, yeah, that's the, the bones, thing. There's so many natural cavities on Oak Island, mm -hmm. which makes it, you know, skeptical say, oh, they're all natural. But I, I think a lot of them were reworked or, yeah, you know, the potential's there. And and, and that, I said that before. I think that's why they Oak Island was chosen, was they found whoever was there first found a, a, an existing sinkhole. You know, they didn't yep. they didn't have to spend years digging it out. It was already dug for them down to whatever. And they probably just modified it. Right. And then created Ooh. created, you know side channels or right but yeah yeah it's interesting use what's there yeah. yeah use what's there and you know and that's what the uh the seismic when they came back and did the the new version of the seismic data in uh, season nine they talked about what looked like a natural tunnel leading from down towards smith's cove all the way to the money pit and they said it did look like it was natural um by the way it was shaped it wasn't uniform so um but obviously we're finding man-made stuff down there, like the bones and all of that kind of stuff. So, you know, was man down there? I think so. I think they, just like you just said, I think they utilized all that kind of stuff. So anyway, Seth, Tom, last questions or comments or. Uh, I'm good. Thank Scott? you very much, Scott. Great to see you again. Yeah. Yeah. Fans to be here and always happy to come on. Yeah, definitely folks. And like I said, if you haven't already check this book out, it's, it's a good one. And I, I've, I've got to go through and take the time to read it again, because just like when I go through the show, getting prepping, you know, prepping for the podcast, every time I watch it, I get more stuff. And I know that every time I read this, I'm going to pick up more stuff from it. So, uh, but thank you for this book and thank you for coming on the show tonight. Really, really appreciate it. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Folks, thank you all for being here with us tonight. We've had a fantastic time with author Scott Clark and uh, going over uh, episode number nine. And we hope you will catch us next time right here on the Day Free 906 podcast. Good night, everybody. Thanks, Jan. Yeah, thank you, Jan. Good night, everybody. All right.